appreciate you hitting the button. Welcome to the How to Hustle podcast with Hype. Follow me on Instagram and Twitter at I am Hype. That's H Y M P E. It's Hype. It's not Hype. I'm not geeked up. Appreciate you hitting the button. Welcome to the How to Hustle podcast with Hype. This is episode 57. You follow me on Instagram and Twitter at I am Hype. That's H Y M P E. It's Hype. It's not Hype. I'm not geeked up. Very special guest in the building today. Introduce yourself to the audience, ladies. Hi, I'm Tony B. I'm Jim Bunny. And I'm B. And we are the Group Tag Live. Hi, guys. Hi. Shouts out to the Group Chat Live. Ladies, let them know where y'all coming in from. International hype is not just a hashtag, it's a way of life. Oh, my. We are the Group Chat Live, healing outside. We are healing from Houston. Texas, yes, give me y'all some of that southern love. We are the group chat live out of Houston, south side of Houston. Better yet, shouts out to Houston. I got a lot of love out of, out of Dallas, so you know what I'm saying? Shouts out to Houston. It's my first Houston situation, but a whole lot of Dallas on the podcast. Yeah, shout All out right. to Dallas. Shout out to Dallas. My That's where Dallas. she's from. Yes, from Oak Cliff. She's a Houston transplant. Oak where, Cliff, where? shit. Then hold yeah. up, man. I got some niggas down in Oak Cliff. Oh, <laughs> Oak, Cliff. Oak Cliff, born and raised, but honorary Houstonian. Shouts out to my niggas from Oak Cliff. I know you locked in and listening. No names necessary. All right, let me get the rundown now. Custom Hustle. Custom Hustle is my clothing line. We do custom baseball jerseys, custom jackets. You got the sweatsuits and down the t-shirts. Follow that on Instagram at Custom Hustle World and on Twitter at Custom Hustle Co. My cleaning company is H2H Cleaning. H2H Cleaning is on Instagram as a tri-state area situation. But if you make it worth my while, I will slide up on you. Now the radio rundown. E-Block Radio Network every Monday in the E-Block Radio Network at 2 o'clock. The GFT Radio Network, 2 o'clock every Tuesday. Thursdays is WTNUPhilly.com, 1230 on Thursdays. Fridays, the I Say Podcast Radio Network, 10 a.m., and so, ah, damn, Saturday, Saturday, THC Radio Network, 10 a.m. Uh, ladies, y'all ready? We're yeah. ready. You booked it easy. Hey, y'all. <laughs> hey, this y'all, is how you, this is how you hustle is one of my hashtags. Everything is a hustle. You know what I'm saying? Yeah, yeah that's true. All right. All right, so here we go, ladies. Episode, where we, 57? Yes. All right. How important are your man's needs? Now, the way that we're going to do this is you can take that however you want. We're talking physical, emotional, uh, financial, uh, <laughs> however it is that you want to tackle that topic. How important are the needs of your man? How important do you make those needs? Nobody. We're going to start. We're going to start with Jen because she was the first one that showed up for work. <laughs> Why would we start with me? She was the first one here. <laughs> Why would we start with me? You was the first one. You was on time, girl. Let's go now. How important are my men's needs? Are all my men's needs, like all of them, or as a collective, like we talk all my niggas or just one nigga? Like how how are we working with this? Whomever you have is number one on the roster. How important are his needs? How important is it? What? I I think that was just in general, Jennifer. Not, I don't think he's meaning like your specific nigga. Just like if you had a man, how important are his needs to you? Okay, that's what we rolling with. Okay, yeah, yes, there we go. Copy that. Thank All right. So, <laughs> um, I feel like a lot of times women, as as we have men and stuff, we get left behind. So I have to be an advocate for myself, and I'm gonna say his needs come second because I have to put myself first at some point. And when it comes to physical, usually I'm the person that is physically on somebody. Like, come on, let's do it. Let's do it today. Let's do it. Let's do it today. Like, let's do it right now. Let's do it. Let's do it wherever we at. Let's do it. Like, so physically, if he ain't with that, which I have niggas that be like, calm down. Like, just later, tomorrow. Blah, blah, blah. So, I don't know. I'm the, I'm the nigga in the relationship. So, I'm first in this He's situation. the nigga. <laughs> I'm the nigga in the relationship. So oh. I feel like my needs should come first. But uh, his needs are just as important as mine or anybody else's. Like, once we get down to the rundown, like, you tell me what you need, I'm going to tell you what I need, and we just going to kind of 
puzzle that shit together and figure it out. See, this is how we got to the topic before I let y'all both answer. Was everybody always hit you with the happy wife, happy life situation? Nobody ever talks about how a happy husband or a happy spouse being the male can make a situation better. A everybody happy always puts the, happy spouse, yeah, happy every, everybody puts the emphasis on her being happy. Nobody puts the emphasis on him being happy. That's how we got well, it. Do you know why? Go ahead, then you jumping in, B. Go ahead. Yeah, it's because usually men are doing something wrong. Like wow. women are not very very hard to manage if they are loved right and respected and all of that stuff like that. Yeah. So usually something is off and the man is the, the man is doing something off to make the woman unhappy because we're really easy creatures when you just think about it. You try to go viral. You try to go viral, fam. <laughs> Cause um, that is not that is not the truth. And hold up, hold up. Be didn't answer the question. We're not letting us get out of there. How important are your man's needs? How important? They're very important. Um, I believe um, uh, treat someone how you want to be treated. So if I want my needs to be taken care of, then I need to do the same for him. So just in general, my man's needs are really, really important to the point where I kind of throw myself into his world. And I kind of forget about myself sometimes. And that has happened in the past where I become so consumed. So maybe I need to work on balancing. But I, at, at this point, I do think they are important. No one needs to be um, unhappy and unsatisfied in a relationship. Mm -hmm. At all. So, and that's not a relationship. That's some uneven yeah. shit. That's just a ship that y'all just rowing together. It's just a ship. When the shit mm -hmm. is unbalanced, it's just a ship. It's just I mean, a it's a... It's a relationship. It's a dysfunctional relationship. All relationships are not good relationships. Um, first off, it is true. It is true. very true. Um, I don't believe in titles, and I'm not a fan of marriage. So we can start there. I do believe that the person that you are with, <laughs> um, that's that's cool. Like my sisters are married. I come from a family of marriage. My parents are married, but um, yeah, that's just not for me. I do think a man's needs are very important. The person that has um, my person. Um, we need to talk, I Tony. That's another episode that I got coming down the pipe. We're going to talk about when we get done this episode. Oh, no. <laughs> I was raised with love and saw love around me. I just know what I do and do, don't nah, do. That's a whole other episode. We ain't there right now. We ain't okay. there. That's an off mic topic. Um, I do I believe you. that his needs are very important. I'm very much the woman that comes home from work and I cook dinner. I wash clothes. I clean up. I'm running errands. I'm taking care of what needs to be taken care of. But thus far, thus far, I'm also taken care of in another way. Um, I am not wowed by money and things. So buying me won't make me be a better person to you. Um, character is important. Um, I do believe if a man's mental is not good, how can he be any good to me? So if I need him to be good for me, he also needs me to good, be good for him. Um, men don't always be the ones that be doing wrong. It's a lot of trash ass women too. They be fucking these good men up. Preach, mm -hmm. sister. <laughs> yeah, most of the time it's, it's that's true. There are a few, but I I think that. Most of the time it's these niggas. These niggas is it, it, it's most of the time it's these niggas. <laughs> we have these conversations all the time, don't we? We do. We had these conversations. Like, <laughs> yeah, I used to not it'd be these niggas. Why? It's not. Right, so this yes, is, there this are is, some trash I stuff. just don't believe in a happy wife, happy life because I think it's a. I very, don't believe in that either. It's very unfair to the man because it then is it, it, though. Um, it sets the tone that. It, it kind of says the her time, needs are more important than yours. Yeah. I'm more important than you when mm -hmm. we go into a marriage to be equally yoked. But then you set this standard of, yeah, I want to be equally yoked in my vows and what we stand on. But if I'm feeling bad and he feeling bad, my feeling bad is more than his because I'm the woman. He he a man, so he shouldn't feel that bad. But why can't he? Just the same token, you see couples that 
this man is hurt and he have emotions and the woman is kind of like, okay, well, let's move on. Well, she, he human. He got feelings. He hurt. He need that attention. But a lot of women are so stuck on this mindset that a man should just have this understanding of his emotions and then a woman can feel how she feels. I just think it's so unfair. I'm I'm rooter of for the men. I root for the men. I'm the one on the show that I feel like that hold up, hold up, Jen. Like hold, that, up. Hold, up. Um, hold up, Jen. That, that, hold up. Jennifer. That, um, that saying Jennifer, came. he's talking. <laughs> oh I'm sorry. Go ahead. Hold up, Jen. <laughs> All right. So this was a key word here in the question, y'all. Always pay attention to the words. How important are your man's needs? B talking about some niggas. We not talking about some fly by night ain't handling his responsibility. Niggas no. equal men. Yeah. No, nah, it's a difference. There's a difference <laughs> no, here. No, it's not. It's a it's a I difference mean, when you deal. It's a difference. Man. Hold on. It's a difference when you deal with a man and when you deal with a nigga. Two totally different situations. When you deal with a man, he puts a certain expectation there. He sets a certain standard for you to meet. When you're dealing with a nigga, he is the one that's playing with your emotions and he's fucking around your situation and he has things on a bad accord. Now, well, I guess, there. I didn't that's your speech. opinion but my opinion and i the way that i see it is niggas equal men i mean that we use the term interchangeable so it's not like niggas is that i don't, mean, conver I don't mean conversationally what i'm talking about is if you meet a dude if you meet a nigga who got his shit together you ain't gonna call him oh yeah that's the nigga that i fuck with you yes, can call by his yeah, name. Huh? Yes, uh -huh. I am. Yeah. Mm -hmm. you, call that you calling that nigga by his name because you're going to be like, oh, yeah, I'm getting rich. Oh, no, 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 I'm saying nigga no. means man, boyfriend. Uh -huh. That's why I said if we talk, uh, yeah, if we talking, about, if we talking conversationally, for me, absolutely. For me, but for me, like for me, with the type of man that I like, the type of man that I date, part of taking care of him is keeping their privacy. So, no, I'm not walking around. Around talking about oh such and such, I'm walk that's my nigga. I'm also part of taking care of my man. It's not displaying that all the time because what we have in our home is what we have in our home. So me saying my nigga don't disrespect him, don't discredit him or nothing. I fucks with a lot of good nick. No, wait. Okay, wait. <laughs> Take that back. I've dated some good niggas. Um, not many, because I'm not their girl, but I've dated some good niggas. They are, they, you know, you can say it how you want to, but like she's saying, we use it interchangeably. It doesn't change the type of person it is. Because there's a lot of niggas that are better men than these so-called men. So we got to start there. See, all right. See, we, we, get I lost think it's just we get lost in the We get lost in the translation here with, we talking conversationally, yeah. That's my nigga. That's not a problem. I'm not saying like you're demeaning him by saying that. But if you get with a man, maybe I'll maybe we just haven't met this guy yet. Like maybe we haven't gotten there yet. But if you get with a man who, like you said, he makes you want to do all of these different things, like B is more so saying like she's more of the giver in a situation. She said, I consume That's myself me. with all it is that he wants yeah, and what it is that he needs. So once you get with that type dude, though. Who makes anybody like it's the same shit for guys when they get with that type of girl who makes them go a little bit differently and makes them look at the situation differently that he's not going to treat her just like he is every other chick that he's been dealing with because this is a different situation. Be wait for go a nigga like my gal. <laughs> <laughs> right, go ahead, Jen. You was trying you to say something. Jen? Power, it's my gal. <laughs> but we oh, suck too. That's another thing too. Where we're from. That that that's, holds the yeah. that's another thing that holds the that that holds the perception because um I've met um we were on a show with some with a podcast from Philly and um they were mad the they were married and they were like married they didn't really go out but they did a lot of couples things and like where <laughs> we're from and in the age group that we're in um. The married people be out and about too. Like we are like us single people and living that total life. So I think it's all in a matter of, I think the upbringing and then the, I guess the Southern part, cause it's kind of like, um, all of that don't matter. What go on in them four walls do? That's I what I understand what he's about. trying to get at though. You're saying like a man is, you know, the person that's going to take care of home, do all this and a nigga is not. He's like playing games. That's what you're implying, right? That's exactly what it is, yeah. 
Okay. I understand that. But I, I, I just think that those two people, those names are the same. But <laughs> I, I just think okay. And then, but okay. I understand what you're trying to say. Though. So mm -hmm. here's my question in the same token. Before you were married and before you met your, started courting your wife, the women before her was y'all little bitches, y'all little gal, y'all little yeah, y'all little, 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 y'all then they knew they had been in a real relationship. See, I'm a different situation because I never had a girlfriend in my life. I would tell girls when I met them, I don't want a girl. I'm not looking for a girl. And that's not the role that you're going to fill. If that doesn't work for you, I completely understand it. And we can move on from here. <laughs> like, if that really? does work for you, though, we can talk tomorrow. We can talk next week. And all of that could be cool. But as far as us being in a relationship, it ain't happening because that's not what I want. I don't want to tell Tony, you my one and only. And then I'm going to go crack on Jen. And then I'm going to slide and be DMs. I'm not going to do that to you. So why, for me, why? that's why I'm well, not tying myself in any situations. That's very honorable. Why? Mm -hmm. But how did you get relationship practice? Yeah. You know, because you be practicing. Yeah. <laughs> that's how what I look at it. But anyways, we're not. That's a whole other subject. I know you wanted to talk about men need, men's needs, hold right? Jim, Jim was trying to get in a couple minutes ago and say something. Mm -hmm. Oh, I'm just completely shocked at the fact that you just go around telling us, well, this ain't going to be the role that you go. But when I say that, people be like, why would you tell somebody that? I'm, I'm oh, shocked my. too. I've heard it before. But but anyway. So um, I was saying that the saying, um, happy wife, happy life, kind of, to me, comes from, comes from when a wife comes home, she does all of these many things. So like she does all of these things, even if they don't have kids, she does all of that list of things. And that's why it's more of husbands that just come home and they want cooked meals. They want to make sure they clothes wash. They want all of those things. And all she's asking for is this happiness. Like, give me this one thing. Make sure I'm happy um, and I'm going to take care of all your many things. See, happiness, that's though. But, but I can't, I can't control your happiness because your happiness is internal. No, you can't like, control my joy. You can control my happiness. But then that leaves you the can't take my joy. But then that leaves the, that leaves the fact that if what what if one day when I stop doing that one thing that makes you happy, does that mean you're gonna stop loving me that one day? If I can't do that one thing that makes you happy to make you stay, Jen, you want to answer that or what the hell? Just <laughs> you go ahead, Jen. You know, like that. That's why I can't get with the happy wife, happy life. You're thing. muted, Jen. Jen, you're muted. muted. Uh oh, Jen's confused. Okay, um, hold up. Before I before I jump in here, this is my uh, whole situation. Is like I said, people always like discredit the man. Like Tony was going to this one her answer is, yeah, as a man, you was brought up and told like that you've got to be so uh, about everything. <coughs> You have to have a certain amount of strength and all of that. But when you get with a woman and you decide that this is my woman and we're going to grow, build and go on, like you have to be at least vulnerable with her. And if you being vulnerable with her might mean you might some dudes is more emotional than others. And like, how important is it that your woman is going to make that? Is she going to cater her game or she going to alter her game to what works for you? Or is she just going to go, you bitch ass nigga. Why the fuck is you always crying? Is... <laughs> It, that you one of those dudes who he ain't never going to show no emotion no matter what the situation is, do you still cater to that situation or do you go, you don't ever want to open up. You know what the fuck he was when you got with him. So like, how important is it that the things that he needs, how important do we, the women, I'm sorry, how important do y'all, should I say, make those different things or is it just like, I ain't happy so the whole fucking situation has to be torn down because if I ain't happy, nobody gets to be happy. No, no, I don't agree what? with that. I'm, 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 I'm happy. Happy. Yeah, I'm oh, hard to please. I'm hard to please. I have had a wonderful childhood. I was loved. <laughs> I did not grow up on struggle. So 
I and as an adult, I am still loved by my parents and my family. So um people that don't like to really um go to the beat of my own drum, I don't like that. Now I'm not a person that just you have to do what I say. That's what but you just if said. I'm about to be, that, that's what you just said. This is, okay, this is exactly like, what you just like, said. Like, <laughs> I don't get everything I want in my situation, but I also I'm not begging either and i feel that um the happy wife happy life shit child begging a nigga to do right by you and if from day one he tell you that ain't what he gonna do no matter how much you do no matter how much you make him happy he just not gonna be that nigga and a lot of women think if they go in and please this aspect and Show him everything that it, the last woman before her didn't do. He automatically is indebted to her. No, that man is not indebted yeah, to you. Dumb. He don't have to do for you. The same way he wakes up and is entitled to his own happiness, you are entitled to your own happiness. His mental state is on him, though. Because um, if you don't know how to communicate, I can't know when you're not feeling life. If you don't know how to talk, I can't know those things. So that's on the mental is on him. What's on me is how I interpret and how I adapt to his mental state. That's where I think we gotta also talk about the difference too. Because if somebody telling you something, um, how do you respond to it? Because I find a lot of women that's out there, I ain't gonna never pay no bills. My husband gotta do all of this. Also, don't be with um, don't be willing to address the man's mental state. And that's important too. My man's mental is very important to me. Black men are so left behind when it comes to their mental because it's so focused on the strong black woman, which is true. But a lot of men have been strong black men and they get left behind trying to live this picture perfect life and make these young women who didn't have 90% of them didn't have a daddy that gave them their life. So they're looking for a nigga to give them that. And they leaving all their burden on a man. And then y'all forget them niggas be human. They be sad. They need a hug. Some days they don't want to come home and hear us talk. Sometimes the niggas want to come home and you shut the fuck up. I already had a blunt roll, dinner cooks, and you go in your room and he got to do what he needs to do. And that, that could be meeting me meeting all of his needs. And if that's what we have to do, I'm going to be mad, but I'm going to do it. Copy that. Read the room and understand what it is that you, who it is that you have as your partner. And understand yeah. that just because you did it the other way with the other nigga don't mean that you could do it that way with me. Yeah, yeah. Be. that's it's not a one shoe fits all type of thing. Yeah. Mm -hmm. Yeah, and that's the that's the type of thing that some people don't recognize. People don't understand that like just because it always worked for you this way because you dealt with this type of person. That's why I said you might been dealing with these type of niggas who that shit worked for because that's all that they knew. Now you're dealing with a whole new breed of nigga, and that ain't gonna work for him. He needs what he needs, and you gotta meet those needs, or you gotta get the fuck away from him. Jen, you had something to say. What happened to you over there? You good? Yeah, I don't know what happened to the phone. It just like went off and then came back on. It went off, came back on. I don't um, know. My question for you as a man, especially as a man that hasn't done a lot of relationship dating, um, how did you know what you needed in a partner if you had never um, experienced having a partner? Um, if you hadn't experienced something, how do you know what your wants and needs were if you didn't know it, I guess? Yeah. So for me, for me, it's more so like a personality traits. Um, all my friends was always older than me. So when I'm 15, my friends is from 20 to 25 or 30. So when I'm 11, it's the same group of friends. When I was six, it's the same group of friends that I had all those years. So oh, okay. I can, pick and, I I can pick and choose and get from the experiences of everybody else. I can look at the type of girl that like, okay, for, use y'all as an example. All right, my man used to talk to Tony and she did this and I didn't like that. B did this and I like that. So I can pull and say, okay, so when I get in that situation, I'm more so looking for this than that. So for me, like I, I never wanted to have kids at first. Because when you young 20s, it's all about me, and that's what I'm looking to have it about. If I start getting too deep in with somebody, the condom mm. comes off, you start hitting raw, and now she's pregnant. Now this shit is over. <laughs> and oh, wow. your, whole situ your whole situation goes into now I got to gear all my attention, all my thoughts, and all my 
process towards this child. I wasn't looking to do that. That's why I always stated from the rip, look, this is what it is. This is how it's going to be. And if it don't work for you, I understand. I ain't going to call you out your name. I ain't going to talk about you. I might even still buy you this drink if I'm feeling good enough tonight. But I need to establish that with you from the beginning because I don't want you to then tell me about how you're confused as to what the situation was that you walked into. Okay. Okay. Makes sense. Makes All right. Sense. Now, let's switch to show up now and let's talk about y'all. Group chat live. Obviously, the name was self-explanatory that y'all just brought the group chat to a live situation. <laughs> um, <laughs> well, how long? How long have y'all been doing the podcast? Um, we've been doing it for four years. Yeah, yeah. Four this years. Is one year. mm-hmm. We started originally with a group of five, and um, parted ways, and it's just been us three for the last. Three years? Mm-hmm. Yeah. yeah I started with a group of 10, so believe me, I understand. <laughs> a podcast with 10 people? A podcast with 10 people? Oh, my God. Listen, explain it to you off mic. 10 people, and yes, that was how the show ran. <laughs> that was how I ended up in Dallas one weekend. Uh, but we'll talk about that off mic. Okay. Um, all right, so this is what I wanted to know. From y'all, like I said, it was this one episode that I was listening to particularly, and I thought that y'all was all in the school district, all teachers type situation. And we all three of y'all, all three we of y'all are. was like, well, all yeah. three of y'all was like, I hate this shit. So yeah. if you could walk away from the school district, I understand, like you said, it is that one little girl, that one little boy who you like, and you're trying to get them right. Copy, but if you could make the decision to do what it is that you wanted to do, what would it be? Jim, we're going to start with you. Baby, I'll walk away today. I wouldn't even go back tomorrow. <laughs> but because I am my mom um, and the school district that I, I work in, I'm able to move my son around into the schools that I want him in. Our schedules mm-hmm. match up. Um, we have summers, spring breaks, all the holidays. Everything matches up. Is one reason why I don't walk away. That's the main reason. So what you're I saying don't. is once he goes to college, you're out of there. <laughs> Maybe once he goes to high school, I'm out. Soon as they accept him. <laughs> Maybe he said, what, what would you rather be doing aside from teaching? Um, Of course, I would rather be a full-on uh, sex confidence coach doing like not not shows, but doing um, um seminars and doing having my own building where I kind of I see clients on a everyday basis, constantly in and out. Like that's my main focus. That's my main goal. My main drive. Like that's what I want to be doing. That's that's I want to be flying here and there, taking my bitches on trips, and doing my doing my sex confidence coach business. That's all I want to do. All right, one more before we switch it up from you. Are you doing anything to lead yourself into that situation? Definitely. Definitely. Yeah, she got all kinds of certifications and things. I have definitely, yeah, certified and all types of that. Definitely. Check out her name. Check out her name. Go ahead. B, we on to you now. Um, I've had so many things that I wanted to pursue. She is so talented. She is. She She is so talented. I have so so many things. Let me tell something. Let me say something. Go ahead, defend before, your girl. When B was in college, she <laughs> wanted to be a lawyer, she wanted to be an author, she wanted to be a writer. Then she decided out of the blue, she wanted to be a teacher, then she wanted to be a counselor, and then she <laughs> wanted to be an artist and like do balloon type. Oh, artists. yeah. Uh, like wedding. She, she's done weddings. She's been a wedding. Agency. Agency. She has a travel agency business. She had travel. So I was going have- Agency, but she's a very very creative person, and if she really could tap into her niche, she's a wonderful party coordinator. Like, they threw me a fiesta last week from decorations to just being in theme. Her creativity is like outside of the box. I threw my, I also want to be a photographer. When have I used this? All right, so hold up now, ladies. Uh, B, why have we been so indecisive? Like, oh, no. and then she turns the camera sideways on us. <laughs> why have we been so indecisive, B? 
Oh, oh no. I was trying it's to so figure that out earlier. They're so creative. They just have a lot going on in their brain. I do have a lot going on in my brain. I don't really know. I don't know why I can't pick one thing and stick to it. Because I was thinking about that this week. Like, what did I need? Like, a something. Because I don't think education and me gonna going to get along for very much longer. So I need something that I could do that I could stick to. Like, you remember I was going to start that cooking channel? Yeah, and she was going to do a makeup artist. She did my makeup last week. And I know, it was just, I don't know why I can't. I can't stick to one thing. It's probably because of my adult ADD. <laughs> my brain is just going 100 miles per hour. And that's just how it is. And it really sucks. Because adult ADD is an actual thing. <laughs> Shut the fuck up. Tony is not buying it. <laughs> <laughs> and no, now we're going really to Tony. Has, no, she has it. Listen no, I really do. I'm saying, they really do. They really, really do. I, I really do. It yeah, is very Tony. difficult. Be what would you be doing? <sighs> what would you be doing? If okay. You got if wait, I wait. was not, well, I am who I want to be every day. I'm Tony B. the stylist. Houston's um, hairstylist, your favorite hairstylist, hairstylist. Um, I make custom units. I am a licensed stylist. I'm not no play stylist. I am a licensed cosmetologist, a licensed cosmetology instructor. Um, I'm just great every day. That's what I. Am. I just make. She's my inspiration. She's living her dream. Mm -hmm. Oh, I do that. I am very much a person that believe. Um, write it down at the first of the year, and it's that's what you want to do. That's what you got to do, and you got to live your dream. So um, I am Tony B. The Hairstylist, but I'm also Tony with the T, so I give y'all facts on foodie things. So I love going to places and taking videos and giving reviews on stuff, like telling people the good and the bad. So that's what I do. And I just live life and have drinks and have I fun. I just want to be Tony's Barbie doll. I just want Tony did my hair. Tony is my yeah. hair. That's why I'm this. I love podcasting. I love my friends. I love if I wasn't doing this, I would text them all day positive things because that's all I do now is text them positive stuff all day. And I am the one that walked away from education. Um, probably about a week ago was my last day teaching. I will probably never go back. Um, <laughs> I was teaching fourth grade. It wasn't worth my mental. I'm gonna tell you this. Um, when y'all hear them teachers on TikTok and y'all hear them teachers on the computer, it is real. It was not worth my mental. It was not dry. It was not. It was no longer worth driving to work crying, leaving work crying. It was no longer work. No, it, it wasn't working. And I choose me every day, every fucking day. I choose me, and that day I chose me. So this is how. This is why I asked y'all about that. Uh, when I listened to the episode, I just quit my job. I've been working at that job for 13 years. And I said, all right, look, these people, we got a new company coming. These people are on some dumb shit. I'm cool. Can't do it. Um, so, excuse me. Me listening to y'all at the time, and I'm like, all oh, y'all sound like y'all hate this shit. <laughs> like, and you got other things going on and other things that you could put it into. You know, if you can tunnel vision B, you know what I'm saying? Get the Get it from here. To let's get two things going at least. Um, <laughs> see, that's why I, I do get them though. going. I just don't follow through. You have to pay don't her follow, yeah. and beg her a lot, and she'll do them. See, I don't, I'm like it so effortlessly, though. She does it so effortlessly. Like I told, I said, "B, I need my makeup done tomorrow." All right, we'll do it. She got up. We fixed my makeup. And I'm like, oh my god, look at me, be like, look at me. And she has a very creative um, mind. I think she has a very creative mind, but I also think she's a perfectionist, and so she spends so much time in her mind processing how it can be great that she yeah. doesn't get to the process of actually doing it. That's a good point. I think Tony. that maybe yeah. um, I'm gonna try his to advice and have tunnel vision. <laughs> Yeah, he did. Tunnel vision on what though? On what? This is what I hold on. Focus on how great she is, and she hasn't tapped into her great. He's talking. Let me give it to you. This is this is where I was going with the situation. This is why I lined y'all up. I got y'all. I'm paid talent. I'm a professional. 
I lined y'all up like that because, like I said, this is what I just did. I do they gave you a little bit of the rundown in the beginning. I got a clothing line. I got a cleaning company. We talked about y'all did a live show before. I did a live show a couple weeks ago. I do seminars. You talked. You just talked about you want to do seminars. I did a, how to hustle seminars. I did all of these things, and I got myself now to a full time hustler. It's one of my hashtags. It's full time hustler because that's what I'm doing right now. I was in a space in a situation where. The job wasn't what I wanted to do anymore. And before I let this mentally get on my fucking nerves, I can just walk away from y'all now. That is no longer a problem for me. So that's why I brought this up for y'all, because that's the exact same space that I was in, which is why I wanted to bring y'all on so that we could go there and talk about that. Uh, um, did you have a plan? Absolutely. I had insurance okay. lined up and all of that. Uh, yeah, that's, that's people don't think about those little things. That's because people don't be the little I'm, big things. Big big picture thinkers. I, I always am. Before I do anything, I don't already thought about it, analyzed it, and broken down how we can make this work. Um, one last thing I wanted to ask y'all though, which one of y'all was the one that's talking about? I think it was Tony, but I ain't sure. I go to Target. And I buy little things from Target and they got the dollar aisle or something. That That's was Tony. Tony. Okay. What's the last thing you bought out of Target? <laughs> oh. She probably went yesterday. No, I Yeah. No, I didn't. Bitch. Oh, I'm going You're to a Target holic. <laughs> yeah. Actually, I love Target holic. Sundays. I go on Sundays. When my friend, my boo, is watching sports, because I don't really watch sports, and normally if you know, you know that that's the time when all the other people are in Target and they haven't, um, their husbands are doing the same thing. The last thing I bought from Target, all my kids, I went, um, before I left, I had a girls group in my school, and I gave them a Galentine's party, and I gave them gifts, and so I bought them all of these um, mind stimulators. If you have a child that can't focus, if you buy them things like this, um, tell them to connect each one. Each one connected with a deep breath. As they take a deep breath, they inhale, take it out, and it gives them time to um, really attend to their emotions and learn how to control. Black kids don't know how to recover. These are things that can teach them how to recover. So that's the last thing I bought at Target. Copy that. Ladies, I appreciate y'all coming on. Shouts out to Houston, Texas. Let the folks know where they can follow y'all at before we let y'all go. Hey, y'all. We're the group chat live heading out of Houston, Texas. You can find us on all your streaming platforms. Apple Podcasts, iHeartRadio, Spotify, Google Play, SoundCloud. And you can also find us on YouTube, our latest episode, Weight Loss, um, our latest episode, Surgery. Y'all know y'all done had some. You know a friend that's had a BBL, has Lipo 360, had a little breast augmentation. Check us out, and you can see it on YouTube. Make sure you check us out on Instagram at group chat underscore live. We are y'all. The group chat. We're on Audible now. Oh, yeah, we Audible too, y'all. So for all y'all that like Audibles, first of all, go listen, and then DM me and tell me tell me about this Audible thing. And make sure y'all check us out. We y'all favorites, favorites, favorites. Okay, I'm Tony B. Okay. I'm Pink Bunny. <laughs> and I'm B. And we are the, the Group, group Chat Live. live. From Thank you. Shouts out, shout out to the ladies from the Group Chat Live. That was episode 56 of the How to Hustle Podcast with Hype. We are out. Appreciate you hitting the button. Welcome to the How to Hustle Podcast with Hype. Follow me on Instagram and Twitter at I am Hype. That's H Y M P E. It's Hype. It's not Hype. I'm not geeked up.